Good day. Welcome to City V603 Advances in Educational Measurement. We will continue our discussion on validity and reliability item analysis. In item analysis, there are four keywords that we have learned. And these are item analysis, item difficulty, item discrimination, and distractor analysis. What is item analysis? Item analysis is a process which examines student responses to individual test items or questions in order to assess the quality of those items and of the test as a whole. Item difficulty is simply the percentage of students who answer an item correctly. The item difficulty index ranges from 0 to 100. The higher the value, the easier the question. Next is the formula of item difficulty. We have P is equal to HC plus LC divided by N, where the P is the difficulty index, HC is the number of learners in the higher group who got correct responses, LC is the number of learners in the lower group who got correct responses, and N is the total number of learners in both higher and lower groups. So in item difficulty, we check how difficult is our test item. Is it easy? Is it average? Is it difficult? So we try to answer these questions. What is item discrimination? Item discrimination refers to the ability of an item to differentiate among students on the basis of how well they know the material being tested. The closer the index is to positive one, the more effectively the item distinguishes between the two groups of students, which are the higher group and the lower group. So we are trying to check if our item is able to discriminate the higher group and the lower group. And there are three types of discrimination. We have the positive discrimination, the negative discrimination, and the zero dis discrimination. When we say positive discrimination, the learners from the higher group choose more the correct response in comparison to those in the lower group. Uh, for negative discrimination, that means those from the lower group uh, choose more, or th they choose, most of them choose the correct response more than those in the higher group. And when we say zero discrimination, they have equal number. So if we, if we got five fr uh, from the higher group, also five from the lower group chose the correct response. So there is zero discrimination because it was not really able to discriminate between the higher and the lower group. Here is the formula for item discrimination. There is D, which is equal to HC minus LC divided by N, where D is the level of discrimination. HC is the number of learners in the higher group who got the correct response. And LC is the number of learners in the lower group who got the correct responses. And N is the total number of learners in our group. Later, in, during the demonstration, we will see how these will be used. So, distractor analysis. Distractor analysis means that all of the incorrect options or distractors should actually be distracted. So each distractor should be selected by a greater proportion, proportion of those in the low scoring group. There are three methods in item analysis and one is from Hogan of 2007. Uh, Hogan said that the first step in item analysis is awarding of a score to each student. 
Next is to rank them in order of merit or score. Next is to identify the groups high and low. Next is to calculate the end the difficulty index of a question. Next is to calculate the discrimination index of a question. And lastly is the critical evaluation of each question enabling a given question to either be retained, revised, or rejected. Next method is the point by serial correlation. In this step, we have first score the item as either right or wrong. using this formula. And lastly, we interpret. For norm reference, Ronland and Lynn lay down the steps. First is to rank all from highest to lowest scores. Next is to select highest and lowest 10 scores. Then, we tabulate the number of students who selected each alternative. And then we compute for the p-value or the difficulty index. Then we compute for the discriminating power. And we evaluate the effectiveness of these factors. This is just like uh, the first method. However, uh, for Grunland and Din, they only selected the highest and lowest 10 scores. And of course, once we get the number, we have to be able to interpret it. What do these numbers mean? So in the index of discrimination, if we get 0 0.40, 0 and above, that means our item is very good and we have to accept or retain it. Uh, if we get 0 0.30 to 0 0.39, that means our item is reasonably good but maybe subject to improvement. If we get 0 0.20 to 0 0.29, it's a marginal item and it may need it may be subject to improvement. And if it is below 0 0.19, then it is a poor item which may be rejected or may probably be improved by revision. For the level of difficulty, if we get 0 0.90 and above, that means our item is easy. If we get 0 0.20 to 0 0.90, that means our item is moderate. And if it's below 0 0.20, that means our item is difficult. So there is also this table. This table is what I used in the demonstration. Uh, in, in the demonstration, and here we can see that if it's easy and it's not discriminating, we have to discard or reject it. If it's moderately discriminating, we have to revise it. If it's discriminating, discriminating, but easy. We still have to revise it. If it's moderately difficult um, and it's not discriminating, then we have to revise it. If it's moderately difficult and moderately discriminating, we still have to revise it. If it's moderately difficult and it is discriminating, then we have to include it or retain it. For difficult and it is not discriminating, we may discard it or reject it. If it is moderately discriminating, we have to revise it. And if it's difficult and discriminating, we have to include it or retain it. This is from Padua and Santos 1997. We also have this from another reference. These two. And here now is the sample. So I took this from my oral communications uh, first quarter exam and I chose two sections for this. I, I would have wished to use all of my sections. However, uh, it will be very challenging on my part doing this already took me nights and um, it, it took some time really manual, manually doing this. So what I did at the first part is to manually encode their responses. So I manually um, encoded the responses of these students and then I identified of course the correct responses and count their score counted their scores. Once I have their scores, I ordered them and arranged them according and ranked them according to their scores. So here
here, here, and here. Since I have 70 students in this particular item analysis, then I have to uh, look for the higher group and the lower group. In choosing, uh, in selecting them, we also have to use um, a criteria. And one reference said we have to use 27% of our total number of test takers. So 70 times 27% is actually 18.9 or equivalent to 19. So 19 students are now chosen from the higher group and 19 from the lower group. So the top 19 in the higher group, the bottom 19 in the lower group. So after that, I manually counted who chose, who chose A from the upper group, who chose B from the upper group, who chose I, uh, uh, C from the upper group, and D from the upper group and the same thing with the lower group that's for each item and once you have the number we may now solve for the item uh, for for the level of difficulty and level of discrimination so here for the level of difficulty we have B is equivalent to HC plus LC divided by N so I have here item number two as an example for level of difficulty, we have HC, the correct response. Here, we have 9 plus those from the lower group. We have 0, 9 plus 0, divided by the total number of those from both the higher and the lower group, and that's 38. So 9 divided by 38 is 0.24 or 24%. So for the level of discrimination, we I chose item number 4. So here, HC minus LC divided by N. So 14 here, 14 minus 3 divided by the number of um, learners from a certain group. So that's 19. 11 divided by 19 is 0.58. So for the interpretation, it's this. For item number one, we have, uh, after solving it, zero, it, it had 0 0.71 for the level of difficulty, which means it's easy. And then it has, for the level of discrimination, 0 0.26, which means discriminating. However, uh, in their uh, combination, the action should be revision. So same with item number two. It means it's difficult and discriminating, so thus I have to retain it. For item number three, it's easy and discriminating, I have to revise it. For item number four, it's moderately difficult, but it is discriminating, so I have to retain it. For item number five, if you can see here, this has negative discrimination. So the though it is moderately discriminating and very difficult since it has negative discrimination since yes it is it has ne negative discrimination thus i have to reject the item for item number six it is moderately difficult and discriminating so i have to retain it difficult for item number seven and moderately discriminating i have to revise it for item number eight it is easy and discriminating revise for item number 9, easy and discriminating, revise. And for item number 10, it's difficult and discriminating, thus I have to retain it. So if, if this is an, uh, a tool um, which is for uh, reliability testing, thus I have to make some revision and um, I have to retain and reject some items uh, before I have this tool Before I have this tool to be conducted in, in my research and if this is uh, implemented and used or applied in our um, in our classes th that means next time uh, those that um, th the items that are retained may be uh, placed in the in the question bank for future use and these 
these are my references. That's all for item analysis. Thank you so much. This is once again Miss Joanna Jason Ferrer saying, stay safe and God bless.